Before we get started in this week's Cabinet of Curiosities, I want to just announce the winners of our first month commenters challenge. You guys have just been amazing with that. I really, really appreciate all the participation and it's so fun reading your comments and um, all the feedback and the questions that you all have around the techniques as well as, you know, workshop this. So without further ado, we have five winners. Ivy Rendon, W-R-E-N-D-E-N, Ginger Sparks. Hi, Ginger. Ginger's one of the patrons and yeah, how cool is that? Debbie Bunyard, B-U-N-Y-A-R-D, Catherine Sargent, Marilyn Sandu. Hey, Marilyn. So a few of these I know are my patrons, but I had nothing to do with this. My team did all the choosing um, of the names, just did a random number generator. So we had five this month. I might even up the numbers next month because I want everyone to have a chance to win. And um, yeah, so make sure that you respond to um, your winning at, at admin at robinmcclendon.com admin at robinmcclendon.com leave your email address so we can email you and you'll have the we'll give you send you the link for the downloadable printables and it's a really nice packet of them i think it's I don't know, like 18 or 19 or something of them. And there, I just went deep into my stashes and found all kind of vintage wine labels from the 70s, the 60s and 70s. Um, a lot of really neat Asian ephemera that I've never put in any of the packs before. Some really special things that I was kind of holding on to myself. So I shared some of that. Um, and there even is some images of a cabinet of curiosities that one of my team members daughter who's in Canada has this amazing cabinet so she took pictures of it and there's the lacquer with the underlaying of the scripting is just amazing so I think you guys are really going to enjoy this printable so thanks a lot for participating and remember we're, we're going to do this every month throughout the year so there's going to be a lot of opportunities to win these printables and the only way you can get the only place you can get them is here they will not ever be up for sale all right that's everything so let's get down to the table hey all happy saturday and we're back for another saturday session thank you so much for joining me of course i'm robin mcclendon you're here in my studio with me and um so happy to have you and those of us who are over in the chat right now saying hi good morning from all over the world germany and brazil and australia and new zealand and south africa and france and germany and paris and oh, uk you guys are everywhere netherlands i can't even say all the places of course everybody in the united states we're just saying hello right now so thank you so much for joining me now for you all this is a saturday the next Saturday. But for me, it's right after I finished last Saturday session because I'm looking at all these amazing papers and I'm like, I've got to keep on working on turning these into mark making with the Posca pens. Because of course, I'm just having fun in my studio here and sharing these techniques with you all. So um, yeah, so I'm just going to keep on working here and um, let's keep on going. By now, you guys have a ton of papers. I'm sure all the beautiful papers you make, I'd love to see them. And we're just now going to go into mark making. So early in the video, please, if you're hanging out right now, hit the subscribe button. If you're new um, or if you are enjoying the video or whatever, just thumb it up because it means so much to the channel algorithms. You guys know I've, I've written a book. We're in the publishing part of it now. I'm editing it. And by early winter, it's going to be introduced to the jelly printing community. I'm doing a collaboration with Jelly Arts. They're fully supporting this project. They're excited about the fact this book is coming out because it's a way of answering so many of the questions they get all the time about jelly printing. And you know, I'm one of their, I'm on their creative team. So I work very closely with the owner, Luann and Tracy and the team there. Um, and we just really are so, I'm so passionate about jelly printing, you know this. And they have just brought me in and are just loving on me and they're you know we're just all we just want one big happy world of jelly printers and so just know that all this is going along together so when you hit that that's the, that like button and that subscribe button it really sends it out and tells youtube that this is something people like so they'll keep on sharing it because i'd like to be to 20 i'd like to be to 40,000 in december 
You know how many years it took me to get to 20,000? <laughs> oh my goodness. But last year, let me see, it was a year ago in October that I made 10,000. So it took me another year to get another 10,000. Um, but I think if we all work together, we can push and let's make our goal be 20,000 this year. And, and, you know, just keep on helping me. And I'm going to just love on you guys and give you all kind of good stuff. And we'll have some giveaways that we're going to do with Jelly Arts. So we got all kind of stuff coming. So let's just share it with the world. Okay. I'm going to get the Posca pen. Now, one of the things I like to do I have all of my prints here. These are the very first ones and we just did sample and I want to work with these. Now, I'm not going to use the matte medium this time because I really have, I also work very immediate with the jelly plate. So I like to just, um, I'm just going to sort of make some just kind of organic lines, just kind of work fast. But what I like to do with this is I love to, um, do this and then pull it right up. And what happens is you do get some, you get some, the lines will smush, but I really like that organic look. So I'm gonna take the first one and lay it down. And it's just gonna absorb. Because now these, these Posca pens are acrylic paint pens, right? And so they are long lasting like acrylic paint. They're permanent, so we can just get right in and work with these. So right here, look at how immediate this was. Oh, I love it. So right there, we've just added some lines to this. And of course, you know, when we work with bits and pieces of it, you know, because we're making our decorative papers, right? So when we just started, started taking sections of it, we just get this really yummy stuff going on so we can work directly on the plate like that we can also i can come back and do some gritting so i'm just making patterns no real rhyme or reason to what i'm doing because i can see that this pattern is still down there so i can just add some more texture with the lines and just lay this back down. And so because we can still see that pattern down there, you can keep on adding to your pattern. It doesn't have to just be a one-off, right? Oh, I love it, see? So we just get that extra mark making on there. Love it. And they, we're going to keep on picking this up. Um, but I'm just going to keep on building the plate up here. I'm not going to, just going to grab some stuff here. We can also just kind of make circles. that down and what I'm doing now I'm just adding to these papers you just you know just add bits of information you don't have to overdo it anything like that we're just adding so we can kind of get this subtle mono printing going on and I'm going to get some white Do my scripting so I love doing my scripting on the plate and I like to pick that right up so that it doesn't dry the main thing is that these are pretty juicy pens and keep on activating the tip that way you really get um, so that white is very subtle but I like that because what it's doing is it's breaking up it breaks up the pattern. It's very subtle, um, depending on how much ink we're getting down here on the plate. Um, okay, so I got quite a bit there. 
And of course you can go right onto the paper. We know that. But right now what we're doing, when you do it on the plate, you're getting more of an organic mark. Um, oh, that's good. So we're really not trying to see anything but just this sort of organic mark. And then I'm just kind of doing that all over the paper. Because that's what mark making is all about. <laughs> oh, love it. So put that there. Let's get Okay, let's also do some in between. I'm going to pull some other colors. Let's use a little bit of this um, Holbein quinacridone. A little bit down here. And um, just kind of put some to the side there. And I want to sort of make my circles I like to make with the bottom of the bottle. It's amazing how I'm, this little technique that I love, I, I see these circles so many places. It's amazing how other creators are making their circles with the bottom of the bottles. It's not like it's a big deal, you know, it's just, but it's funny when I see them, it just reminds me so much of my work. They say imitation is this, um, is a, what is this, a syrup or what? form of flattery or something like that it's called so we're going to put this let me see let's just kind of put it next to it so we're doing all kind of mark making on the plate that's the goal here use our posca pins ah oh, i love it we can use our paints you know, just just have at it. We're not, you know, following any rules or anything here. We're just having a good time. And then we can come back kind of with our, you know, kind of create these dots using the pen right on the plate kind of thing. Loving that. Um... Let's get some black. And you see, I'm building a lot up on my plate. So what's going to happen is that this plate is going to be yummy at some point. So I just kind of put the bottle in the bottom of it. I mean, you know, just at the bottom and just make your marks. And just kind of pat them down. I love the way they get smushed. This is what I like about mono printing. Why do it like this versus putting directly on the paper? Because you get this really flattened out organic mark. And to me, that's what it's all about. And then you can kind of start kind of printing over a little bit. And so this paper that we originally just sort of did this mono print where we just really did a mono printing using the um, the glassine paper, right? We put all that color down and then we did the glassine. We're now coming back and we're filling it in and just, just making it really gorgeous. So you don't want the circles. For me, I personally don't try to make the circles so perfect. I like that, that sort of imperfection so that we can, um, I like that, I'm gonna let that set for a minute. Let's come back with this one and put a few of these circles down to go with our Posca circles. Put those right here. Okay. Yes, love that. So the other thing that I like to do, <clears throat> just grabbing papers here, is 
Um, let me find a smoother paper to do what I'm getting ready to do. Works a little bit better. Let's take one of these. So what I like to do is take the Posca pen and you really want to get it pretty activated so you know you got a good amount of paint on that tip. And then it's very juicy so I want to get a good amount of scripting. And then what I like to do is just take, believe it or not, just a little bit of water. I want to activate it and then I'll come back and put this latest down. And we're going to pull that because I really kind of want it to be an activated script. I don't want it to be like, ah, oh, see what happens. You just get this movement that's just, ah, oh, the best. So you can do this with water. You can do it with a little bit of alcohol. I don't think I have my alcohol sprayer right here. Why I don't, I don't know. But let's repeat this pattern. Let's put it right there. And so here, what we're doing is we're just <coughs> Picking up information. You don't really, it doesn't have to be this perfect, ideal, you know, thing. Do this white, let's get this activated. So now that one where it's still a little bit wet right there, I'm gonna go pick it up right over the black. And it's gonna pull it. We're gonna get a little bit more of a line that you're gonna be able to see, but because it's wet there, we're still gonna get a little bit of activation. Oh yes, look at this, it's good. See how we get that, oh, that smushiness. Oh, I love these guys. Let me see, do I not have Okay, so I know what I have a little bit. I have my alcohol here. I'm trying to find my other spray bottle, but I don't think I have it, or do I? So, yeah. Okay. Got my little alcohol spray bottle. I prefer using alcohol to water because um, alcohol dries so much faster and it won't cause the paper to get too soaked that it, you know, it tears too easily. So when you can use the alcohol, the paints react better with alcohol. And also, like I said, it, you don't get the paper too wet so that it gets too much absorption and then it, uh, tears. So that I can activate a little bit. Alcohol and let's put that down. I love this technique. I love activating alcohol on the jelly plate with the pastas and even with any paint. And that's how we get this really yummy stuff that, you know, you look at and say, how did they make those marks? Look at this. It looks so good. I love it. Okay, so I'm gonna put that one there. Let's do some more of that on. Um, let's take this paper. This is because it's nice and flat. You want to do some of these techniques mostly on the flat paper. The uh, another thing that I like to do is I like to paint. So let's take some of this quinacridone. Put it on the paint on the plate. Take a paintbrush. Let's just thin it out a little bit. Let's activate it. I might use a different one. Let's activate it with the alcohol. And let's take, let's take this one. This is a lot thinner in terms of color. And let's just put this like right there. Now we activated it with the alcohol, which is really cool. So we kind of get this more thinned out color. Let's put some more down. 
and uh, so I'm filling up the blank pace, pieces of um, the blank areas of this paper with paint. Oh, which I love. Look at that. That is good. Let's take some more off the brush. Okay, so we're going to let that dry a bit. We're going to come back to that. In the meantime, let's take this piece. And I want to add, let's do some white circles, <laughs> of course. Yes, yes, yes. So we're going to take and put some white circles down on the plate. And let's go ahead and spray it. Let me get it on this side because I kind of I'm working both sides of this. So let's just pick it up over here because we have two sides. So you can just decide to make your papers, you know, double sided so that uh, you get a little bit of images on both sides, depending on how you want to use it. And if you end up only using one side of the paper, it's OK. But sometimes I like to make these into book pages. And then I like to make sure that I have, you know, some information on both sides. Oh, just love how this white is flushing out. Now, for me, I like my things to be a little more organic. I'm not trying to make the circle so circly, you know, because it's less predictable when you can just kind of use it as a place to begin a shape. So when you look at it from far away, you can see how those are like circular shapes. Closer up, they kind of like disperse a little bit. So another thing with mark making is you don't have to make them look so specific. I mean, for me, what really makes it sing is for things to not be so, you know, specific. Oh, I love that. So we're going to let that dry because we can come back with scripting on that. Now let's I'm gonna let that dry a little bit more. Let's grab something else. Um, where are those other papers I had? These. These were some of the ones that were sort of, you know, we just did the testing on, but let's go ahead in here and pull some of these. And putting these down there and we're going to come back over this I find using white also starts breaking up the space without you know making it too uh, you know it's not it's more subtle so it allows you to come back and do scripting or something over it in a way that will just knock it it back or using our Posca pens, you know, oh, this is good over it. So let's get like a pile of papers here. Love all these papers. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come back with, um, here. 
I want to use the Posca pen and get some scripting. Let's get just a little bit of, just a little, little bit of um, the alcohol there. I'm gonna find my um, I got paint everywhere. My paper towels. So you see, I put that right over top of the other Goldens or the Hobine um, Quinacridone, and look at that print. So we want stuff over top of. So I'm gonna spray this a little bit more. It's gonna diffuse it a little bit more, and we're gonna put it like in this middle area there. And I could do this all day long in my studio. And a lot of times I do. I just make all kinds of paper, mark making papers because, excuse me, I use these so much in my books. And we do a lot of book projects over on Patreon. Those of you who are hanging out with me there know that. And we need lots of papers and we need lots of images for our book pages. I showed you guys last week the one that we've been working on. And uh, so, and we have a new one coming up that we're going to start. It's going to be super cool. Um, okay, I'm going to do this this way. It's uh, going to be another structure using old book covers and some of our mark making papers, the rain stain papers too. So I'm going to put this right down this side like this. I'm not going to spray this one because I want it to be a little bit more specific. You'll see the difference. So a lot of times you need, I don't know, a good 20 or 30 sheets per book. So you have to have a lot of stuff to work with. Oh, look at that. So that's more of the Asian scripting there. Oh, let's do some more of that. Do it on this side. Let's put this here. So just have fun with all of this, you know, our Poscas and move this over some. I'll move these off so I can have a little more space. Look at that. So I'm gonna put some more on this side here. And I think, well, you know what I'm gonna put Let's do some white. And this white pen is not as juicy as my uh, black one. Let me just try to really get it. Oh, here we go. Here's some coming out. Okay. Okay. Let's do that right here. Okay. Nice to get a little bit of, oh yeah, love it. So I think I'm gonna put some, you guys know scripting is my favorite thing to do in terms of mark making. I'm going to be doing um, scripting 2.0 very soon. Just trying to get it together because I'm going to going to go to sort of the next level with everybody's scripting. So if you haven't done my intuitive scripting workshop, I'll make sure the link is here on the video. Um, jump in and grab that because those would be the basics um, to to moving on. But I want to help people develop their because so many people who love the scripting. It's important to help you develop your own hand and your own rhythm to the scripting look at this so good so i love this piece that piece is done but we have this one so let's go back to the black and let's do some of that because i kind of want to do this Let's do 
this down right here. So now we're just putting this over top of where we um, did the circles on it. Yep, this is good. So we have that going. I like to mix it up between the Asian scripting, what I call my Asian scripting, and um, I don't know what I put at the top. Here it is. Like try to keep them on there. And um, old world. I call this as old world, like old world European, very flowy and calligraphic. I'm gonna put that right here. Yes. That's good. Some right here. That right there. So this page is looking good. You see, I'm working with a lot of the ones that were flatter. It's a little bit, I mean, for making marks so that you, it really picks the marks up nicely without the crinkles, you know, but the crinkling gives it a different effect. So it's not a problem. So these are done. This is where I did a lot of the white on there. I like that. Now, when these dry, I'm going to show you how I also will, I will also mark make right on the papers. Let's go back and grab this green one. Now, what I'm going to do is I really want to break this up. So let's do some scripting. And I want to spray it because I really want it to um, bleed. Because for me, I want these marks to look really indirect on this, on this crinkle paper. And you'll see how it really will change the vibe of it all. Get this really yummy stuff going on. Um, let's get, so I'm going to do some more of this black first. So this is going to be our foundation. And when they're dry, we're going to script over them too. So let's get some more. Just a little spritz. You don't want to overdo it. First, pat it down before you rub it. That way you pick up the pattern without smushing it too much. But we do want it to smush some, so we're okay with that. Let me come here and grab this edge right there. Okay. So we're doing good. See? So with that white underneath it, you know, we're just building up. Building up, building up. Okay, let's see. So we have this one. You know, I think I'm gonna put a lot of white scripting on this one. Let's do white. Let's skip this one. Is that the other one? It's not as juicy as I want it to be. Oh, here, this has got a lot. I just want to grab that fresh. We're going to just keep on picking up. Now I'm doing a lot of scripting. You don't have to do the scripting. You can just do, you can do lines, you know, or circles or whatever pattern you resonate with. It's about your own visual vocabulary. So we're just trying to get marks down. So I'll show you if you just want to, you know, you're not feeling confident about the scripting thing. Just you can just do circles. Just do loops. Just do loops, and then pick it up. Because right now, what we're doing is we're not trying to get something that's you can visually see what it is. We just want marks. The point is to layer, 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 layer marks. 
That's the goal here. So, you know, we're breaking up the pattern more from those, the circles we put down and we're, now we're just putting, we're just really doing white over white over white over white. And this makes a really nice layering. You really see where we picked up those. <laughs> Just loop, just do loops. This is one of the things I teach in scripting 101. We just do certain patterns over and over again. It loosens up the, the wrist and it sets your, your mind, your hand, um, mind coordination for the movement of this scripting. It's like when we learned how to write, you know, we had to kind of learn the rhythm. Um, see, so this is really breaking this pattern up nicely. Look at that. Oh, gosh, it's so good. So good. Okay, so those are there. I'm just going to go back and flush out some of my earlier patterns because you guys are getting the idea of it all, right? This one, I'm going to do something with the pins directly over it. This one is so, so yummy. Let me just do some of this on top of this, too. <laughs> It sticks to the plate a little bit when you're working with them, but don't worry about it. It's just all marks at this point, so it's all good. So I hope this has helped and give you some ideas with mark making over our papers. Yeah, this picked up a lot. You can see that line. Let's put some more of that. Oh, I love it. It's subtle, but you can still see it really good when you're, when you're looking directly at the paper. Doing it on the jelly plate, you just create a line that you just can't create um, with your hand. So I like to layer the jelly plate line with me going over it with, you know, I'll go over this with some of my mark making and you'll see it will flush it out. But... Yes, see, we just get that, that extra bit going on there. And then, let's just do it like this, this plain piece there. Let's just do some white scripting on it. So you can just even see what that's going to look like. You don't even have to. I'm, I mean, I mix a lot of my stain papers with just white to be as chunky as it is she don't want to give up any paint okay I'll do some scripting so you can see right here let's just put this down so you can just do some of this right on top of the on um, just regular paper without a lot of paint or anything on it your, your archival tissue paper and kind of start picking up this kind of line because the black is coming up because we have the black paint down there. Let's do some more of that. And that just creates another layer of papers that we can, you know, work with. So just kind of flipping them back and forth. No rules. No accident. I mean, you know, happy accidents. If you, uh, there can't even be accidents because there's no rules. <laughs> it's no right or wrong. None of that. It's just making happy marks that, you know, but we're making just happy, sophisticated marks because of the, the, the kinds of, you know, we're using the, the plate, you know, we're using the pasta pens. We're using good supplies. And really, honestly, the difference between art that looks, you know, like frameable art or fine art, whatever you want to call it. Um, and craft these stuff is really your supplies. Honestly, yeah, technique, but supplies. You use decent supplies in, the, in a, you know, in, in a, an effective way, you'd be surprised the differences that happen with that. I love this. Just seeing this, this white, this plate is going to be amazing. Why I go to pull anything off of it? Let me get some more of this. I love it. Let's just 
get this right here. Let's do it this way. I'm just kind of shifting because this, uh, good. I'm going to show you what we're going to do with this to finish it off. It's going to be amazing. Now let's also just take, because I'm thinking it, so I try it. This is what I do when I'm in the studio working. Um, if I have an idea. So now I'm just going to take a blank piece of paper. I mean a fresh piece of archival tissue paper. And I'm just going to activate this plate. Let's see what comes up. We get a nice amount of uh, alcohol down there. And I'm just going to lay this down. See what happens. I need to pull it up quick because it's going to. Oh my goodness. So I'm going to let this sit for a minute and I'm going to. What I'm going to do? I'm going to get my stronger paper. Because this other paper that we used last week, the sketch paper, it, it'll stand up to, to this right here. So let's put it back down. And we're just going to really let it stay on there. And what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to pull what's on here up without putting any paint down. Of course, we could lay the you know color down and all that. But I just want to see what's going to happen. Just to see. We never know. You never know. Okay, so we're not getting much of the pin off. See that? But what we're going to do is, because I still want this painterly, I don't really want to use the brayer. Let's just do this. What I like to do is put, um, use the brush and kind of get brush marks all on the plate. This we could do over a darker paper, but I'm doing it on, I wanted to go back to this because I'm hoping I can pull more of this black up that's underneath there, just to see if we can get some marks. And here, as like I said, I'm not using my brayer because I want a different mark. And I use, I use the paintbrush on the plates. And I'll show more of this technique in workshop this, which will be coming up, I'll show you. We'll just talk about, I'll flush it out a little more. Okay, let's lay this down. See what we can pick up. Kind of picked up that under layer in a way that's interesting. And if all else fails, we're just gonna work through this. This is what I do. I have this idea so the alcohol didn't release much of the pasta pen because the pasta pen is an, is an acrylic, so it's a pretty strong paint. So it didn't have, there's no binders in the alcohol. So I was seeing whether or not it would melt it, but because it's a paint, it's a permanent paint, it's not gonna melt it the way it would like the dyes. So now I put the color down without, I mean, I could have brayered it on, but I wanna do, I'm gonna play with different techniques, things that to get a different look. So let's just see, and this paper is so strong that we shouldn't have to worry about it sticking. But what I'm trying to do is get more of this under layer pulled up and it looks like it wants to work. Oh my goodness, yes. See, you get this real neat brush stroke thing happening. Yes, so. See where we're able to pull up because it's more it's got more of a paintbrush line to it. See that? Oh, I love it. And we pulled a lot of stuff off of this plate. A few little a little bit of paper here. This paper is so strong, just a little bit of it. You couldn't do that with a, with a paper that's not as strong as this this stuff. The other papers we use would, except for you could use it with the um the uh Glassine, you can put the glassine down and do what I just did. But I really, really love this. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to do some scripting over it. So let me get one of my black pens here. 
And with this, what I would just come back and do is just do some scripting just to kind of mimic what we've done there, kind of maybe in the middle here. So see how we just really immediately start breaking up that pattern that we just pulled off with the paintbrush. Um, what I want to do is I want to get, let's get, I have an ivory. Let's get this ivory. I really like this ivory too. It's subtle. And it's going to hang over this black that we have here and kind of give a subtle pattern. And so what I do to break it up, because you know I'm always layering. Everything for me is layering. So over this black, in order to push it back a little bit, I'm gonna come with this ivory Posca pen, do some similar scripting over it, and you see how it'll start breaking it up and pushing it back more? So look at that one, and we're gonna do the same thing. So, you know, the walk away here today is layer, layer, layer. When you're doing mark making, it's the same as I always say with jelly printing, layer, layer, layer. That's just gonna give you that beautiful complexity to your design and to your and to the papers we use. Now you use any section of this paper, it just becomes amazing. If you want to use it as a page in a book, look at that, look what you're already starting with. You can collage on top of it, do some really cool things. So this one, you know, one more thing, I gotta do one more thing. Let's use the gold, because I have the gold here. The gold is nice too, from Costco. So here are the same thing. We could just script over it. So I'm just kind of creating pattern over top of pattern. We can also change the direction. We can also change the kind of scripting that I'm going to do. I'll go more the Asian scripting here. What I want to do is just have these amazing kind of lines on the page. And so look at that. We just pulled a print from what was down there using the brush. So we get these really nice brush strokes. And then now we're just scripted. We scripted and over scripted and just have this really neat piece. Ready to go. Now, this one that we did, I looked up because it was getting ready to end. This one right here, what I'll do, we did these marks on the, the gel plate, right? Then when I come back, I'll just make sure to short marks right in between them to carry over this idea of these marks. So these you can do right on your paper. And what that's going to do is going to flush out this more organic mark with a more crisp, sort of sophisticated line. And that's where you get the same push and pull. So it, it's what takes your prints from just looking like, okay, we laid it down and made a print <laughs> to something that's exciting. Those of you who hang out with me and have followed me for a while, you know, I have a few mantras. One of them is my 80% rule. Never feel like you've got to finish the entire thing. Don't put that kind of pressure on yourself. Just have fun and enjoy yourself. So I'll show you the first set of lines. So you can see how that gold back over what it's doing. Okay. Now I'm going to get the ivory. Um, so the 80% rule. Never feel like you've got to finish something entirely. My other rule. Have fun. No right, no wrongs. There are no mistakes. And what we're doing, there's no mistakes. We're just hanging out, having a good time. This is not a job. This is not something that you got to do. You get to do it. This is something you never have to show anyone to even be worried about uh, criticism. This is something that you're just doing to fill your spirit, to fill your soul, to heal your heart to find community of like-minded people. That's what we're doing this. So this doesn't have to be about, oh, it's gotta be done technically this way and that way. And oh, it's about fine art and all this other nonsense. It's not about any of that. It's just about living our lives and enjoying ourselves and connecting with other like-minded spirits on this planet. Lord knows we need that. So you see, I'm going the other way with the white. So I'm kind of doing a cross hatching, but it, it really, and boldens this, you know, makes a bolder pattern. 
Do you see what's happening here? Look at what we're getting. Oh my goodness, I love it. See that? Okay, so now we're gonna go and get a thin black right here. So yeah, so it's the 80% rule. We don't have to finish it. Number two, it's have fun, no right, no wrongs. And the other one I think I say a lot is layer, 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 layer. Everything's about layering. I'm, I'm going to do some black now. It's all about layers. So many layers as you can create is going to be what will take your work from just being, you know, okay, not bad, to just being something that is just like amazing. Because, you know, what it does is it brings the eye in. So people now start seeing more stuff with you. They're like, oh my goodness, I didn't see that. And they look again and they're like, oh boy, I didn't notice that. You know, that's what we want. So now what I'm doing is I'm putting these longer lines cross hatching over the black so that we're just building this up with something that's going to just really be cool. Okay, so you can see where this paper has come from. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back with the gold over top of this black. And it's gonna just really knock it back. So just make longer strokes. You just kinda wanna cover it because that's where we're gonna get this sort of subtle. So we can make the lines longer. So stuff is just kind of overlapping. And we're really just bringing this, this print in. And now everything is kind of cross hatching on something that we started off just doing the Posca pin lines on the plate. So just go over your stuff. You're changing the stroke, you're changing the length of the stroke. All of that is super important. And so what's happening with this last stroke is I'm purposely just bringing it through the print just to integrate it. So we have a nice overall pattern, which is what pattern line is all about, right? And we're creating this amazing texture just by doing this. I mean, look how good this looks. Can you imagine how nice this is gonna be in your journal or in a collage or something? Let me just get this, because we could use a little black here. Just kind of doing some light strokes. Okay. So, here's another example. See how complex that is? Those Poscos are amazing. Over our original stained papers and then our jelly printed Posca marks, and then we finish it with a little bit of additional mark making. And you just make the best papers. So, let's see. We're going to finish up because I know I could do this forever. Once again, I'm probably already over the mark of time. So, this one is still very kind of bold. It's not layered enough for my taste. So we're going to get a white Posca pen marker here. What I like to do, if I can get this started, I'm going to do some scripting right over. Just small. And what that's going to do, it's going to push this black back. And see how we start getting this really nice pattern over top of what we were working on. And I'm gonna do the same, I'm gonna do a similar thing to what we just did. And I'm gonna push these, I'm gonna push it back with, let's use some gold. I'm gonna take this gold pen and we're just gonna kind of go over it, push it back a little bit in between it. I like to do this right on my jelly plate, especially when you're using the, the tissue papers and stuff because it'll stick. 
So it'll make it easier for you to use your Posca pens without the paper sliding all over the place. So I'm purposely working on top of the plate because it acts as a, uh, you know, to hold the paper in place. Otherwise, this would be sliding all over the place. So we've just kind of done a little bit over top. And so we've taken that plain craft paper that we've used the green on. And then we've kind of done the, the scripting on the plate. And then we've done this. And then what I'm going to do with this one, I think I'm going to go back. So then what I like to do is I'll go back and pull paints. And let's see, should we use, I'm inclined to use this gray it's kind of a green or blue gray or something and now we can actually spritz right over this and just knock it back even more so we can just let that sit there and dry and it's going to be amazing so know that like with this one i'm gonna use the gray too Oh, before I do it, let's hold up. Let's, yeah, I'll just keep it like it is. So we'll just kind of get this sort of thing with it. And I do think I'm gonna use a little bit of gold. So this little plain piece of paper that we just did that jelly printing scripting on, we want something that's just gonna stay pretty, you know, kind of neutral, not too much, because you need some papers that are not as bright as um, some of your other things to kind of push things back. So this one, I think I'm gonna do the same thing. I think I'm gonna use the silver, silver shine on this one. So when we're completely done, after we've jelly printed and everything, just come back with your sprays, spray, and you're just gonna add another layer of amazing complexity to your work. Oh, this is so good. When it dries, oh, this is great. All righty. So one other print, one other thing I wanted to. So this one, I might leave this one alone because it's so good. That's just some good gold paper. Let's just see if there's anything else I want to show you. So even if we take like this one that we've been working on, let's go ahead and crumple it up because it's dry. And then let's just get some of the gold, Seth's uh, eyes ink in the gold mine. And then let's just go ahead and clean it up, crumpled the gold mine, do it right on the jelly plate. And uh, this is gonna be good. So, you know, just know that when you come back after you've done your printing, you can just add more goodness. By putting spraying stuff on the jelly plate and making it happen. And this bit of gold is so subtle and pretty that when it dries, it is worth this extra layer. This extra layer is definitely worth it. And then all of this just becomes stuff that we can use. Just see when it's crinkled, it's just so lovely. One thing I think I want to try, let me just, one other thing. Then I'm gonna let you guys go, of course. I think, you know, I love Seth's licorice. I know I have it. Oh, this is like one of my go-to. Now I want to, you know, if I want to knock this back a little bit more and kind of harmonize, just get a little bit. <laughs> a little bit goes a long way. But what I'm going to want to do is like in some of these areas right here, I want some more. I want it to be darker. I really want a little bit more. And this kind of is like an eggplant color. And uh, such a good way to pick up color. Let's get some here. And I know you, many of you already have this licorice. So pull it out.
yeah, see how it just kind of integrated some of the black that we have down. Oh, I love it. I'm going to get some of this, this gray. I think this is one of my new favorite because it's kind of like a French blue. And I like the way if you just use a little bit of it, it, it integrates your other colors nicely. And I'm going to do a little bit more gold. Just, just a hint of it like that. And we're going to let these dry. I'm going to show you what they look like finished up. But, you know, we started with something that was just sort of like... Well, I did them all. But remember, we started with this mono printed kind of piece. I left this one a little bit more plain because I liked that. So I try to mix things up. And then this one, I had a little bit more of my color palette on so that when you go to use bits and pieces of it. And then this was the third piece that was almost entirely different than the other ones. So you can just keep on building up pattern on pattern on pattern. So we're going to let these dry. And I'll come back and show you the finished ones. And also, I clean my area up with water and paper towels. So, for instance, I'll just show you because you know I don't know how to stop. Um, when I clean it up, I just use water. I use my paper towels. Now, this right here becomes something that we can do something with. So, I'm going to show you what I would do with this. I still have some ink over here from earlier. So, let's see if we can get a little drops. And this is a good one just to get a little bit of ink so we can get some bleeding. Not that, you know, it's going to be enough. And I'm going to do a double layer. So I'm just going to lay this down and get it to all absorb. And we're going to turn some regular old paper towels with iZinks cleanup on it into some really good ink blots that we can use in our work because I use these paper towels in my work. I mean, why not? It's paper just like copier paper, any other kind of paper. And so really pushing down to let the ink come through. Look at this. Oh, just so good. This is good. You know, this is good. I'm talking about some really nice marks ink blots and so just that easily we have a lot of nice ink blots and of course we could do some more I mean I have some more in here so let's just go ahead and do a little bit more then I'm gonna let you go I promise so we'll flip it because um, I still have ink in here and I like to use all my ink because this will dry up but you can reactivate it with some water so let's just go ahead and get it all Okay, so let's flip it over this way and let it absorb. Reverse. Okay. Let me just get a piece of um, paper. You know what's good to use is, while that's absorbing, you're here. I have a piece of um, glassine that could use some more marks as opposed to me using my hand. But your hand will start making fingerprint marks, and I don't want that. I just want to press down very hard, and I want those ink blots to absorb through. I don't want weird little marks. And, you know, as my hands get inkier, it's going to just put down ink. But I could always use more marks on my glassine papers. All right. See, so we got that kind of mark there. And then as we lift this up, I'll just go ahead and put this down to get the rest of that. We open it up and just the paper towels that we use to clean up with now. Look at that great mark making. I mean, look at this. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> it's so simple. But wait till we go to use this in our cabinet of curiosities. I know you guys, your, your mind is already reeling with all the ways we can use this. So clean up with paper towels. And then do mark making on those. You will not be disappointed. Now, of course, to finish, I could just spray a little bit of the eye zinks and the gold just to kind of flush this out. 
make it a little bit more yummy. And I think I'm going to do a little bit of this morning mist. Gosh, I can't get rid of this, get away from it. Just spritz it a little bit. So in all these little places where we could use a little extra color, just to make this a little bit more complex, why not? And just a little bit of alcohol, because I want this to bleed a little bit. I want these, these ink blots to bleed. And if I spray alcohol on it while it's still wet, you'll see when you're doing it, it starts moving it a little bit, which is nice. And so it'll start bleeding out. But alcohol dries fast, so it's nice. It kind of stops the bleeding too. But it starts bleeding out a little bit, and you just have this really beautiful paper. Alrighty, I'll be back with dried papers. <laughs> okay, so we are back. Our papers are dry. And I want to just show you how beautiful this um, paper towel looks. See with the overspray, I'm getting it really close. And I really want you to appreciate not only the, the, the how the ink blots, see how they really bled because I put that extra alcohol on them, but just the overspraying of the gold on them. I mean, you just take a paper towel and you can turn it into something absolutely amazing. Look at this corner where the gray um, laid down with the gold and the, the color that was already underneath there. I'm going to try to get it to, to, I'll stop moving it so you can see that. Just look how pretty that is. Just subtle and beautiful. So paper towels, my friends, if you can't, you know, like honestly, you know, if you, you know, you just can't spend money on all these papers and stuff like that. Although a lot of the papers that I show you are inexpensive and you get like a lot of them. So you may spend $9 for the, um, this archival tissue paper, but you get like 200 sheets, I think of it. I mean, so when you think about it, it's not a bad deal. If you didn't do anything else, but go to the dollar store and grab a roll of paper towels. I'm not being funny. You can make beautiful stuff with these things. So let's show you the papers. They're all done. This one, it just reminds me of graffiti. I love, love, love this one. I think this going with my graffiti text that I do would just be amazing. I mean, it just looks like a graffiti wall. I love it. This was the one that we just did that beautiful pull with, um, on the strong calligraphy paper using the brush just to paint the paint on so we get this really beautiful textured kind of brush mark and then we over scripted it in, in a layers of black white and gold and this you know just taking sections of this and using it in our journals and stuff it's just going to be really good this is the one where we did just cross hatching but it's take cross hatching using um the white the gold the black posca pen we did it over top of the Posca pens that we did on the gel plate. And you just get this really neat look. And these are just our pages that we did the mono printing on. And then we just did over printing scripting with alcohol on the gel plate. This was the same. And then this is when I came back and did a little bit of the overspray of the gray and the gold. And you can just see the subtle patterning there that we did. So, you know, we, we used the eyes inks on the bottom. We created this, this sort of background tie dye pattern. We came back on with our Posca pens on the jelly plate and we overprinted. We did the, the circles with the bottom of the bottle. Then we came back and we sprayed it again with eyes ink. So it's layer, layer, layer. We, how many layers do we have on here? We can count, you know, um, at least five or six layers of stuff. And that's what you want to do. It's just not like one layer and it's done. You see a lot of that and it's, that's not where you get the complex pattern. Now, this was just the the craft paper that just had a little bit of staining on it, right? And I did the layer of the white on it and then came and oversprayed with the gold and with that gray again and the eye zincs. And we just have a nice piece that will work with something else and not compete, you know? So you kind of want to have some that doesn't have a lot on it, some that has more on it. So when you think about your mark making, you don't want all your papers to have the same weight meaning you don't want the same amount of information, the same thickness of color. You have to have some things, you know, like we have a, a green here with a lot of white on it. So it really pushes it back and makes it look like a lighter palette so that if we do something like this, you know, you can use this one, this one, and this one together in a collage and have enough difference that it will, your, your collage will pop. So we have this one. 
And then we have this one. That green, it was just the basic green on there. And then we used the gray, oversprayed it. We did the black on the jelly plate. And then we, you know, did a lot of layers of scripting. And then these are all the ones that we did from last week that I haven't even done anything on yet. So hopefully that gave you some different ideas about mark making, a different approach to it, not just the same very, you know, bold, but definite prints. You know, some stuff has to be subtle. I like the bold, definite, and I do those too. But then you need some subtle papers that you can make so things can integrate. Um, so I hope that made sense. That worked. And, you know, once again, thanks for hanging out with me. Love you guys so much. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. Hit the bell. Hit all so you get all of our notifications, these wonderful premieres that we hang out on. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please thumbs it up because the goal is 40000 on our channel and ready for our book launch. And there's going to be a lot of great things with this book, book launch. I'm actually going to want to come to various cities and also um, visit some of my European, you know, and um, New Zealand and Australia and South American family. So we're gonna, I'm just really gonna try to make 23, 2023 amazing for us and just continue to bond this community. Love you guys, take care, bye-bye.